What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on, yes, that one, COVID. It's still a pandemic. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is still a pandemic. And there are a lot of other viruses out there that are still a threat to you, many of them which we will be talking about today. So subscribe to my channel down below to help keep yourself informed. If you want to help keep others informed, give this a thumbs up and share this with everyone. All right, starting off today in Tennessee, a school district moves to virtual learning due to illness. This is the Grundy County Schools has moved to virtual learning to start the school week due to illness, according to the county's Board of Education. You know the deal. Students, teachers, staff, they're all t sick at this time, and when enough of them are sick, they have to switch over to virtual learning. Then we go over to Mesa County. This is in Colorado. A small number of MPOX cases, formerly known as monkeypox, has been confirmed in Mesa County. Not surprising that we're still seeing this going on, but it doesn't stop there. There are more cases of this to be found. In Michigan, in Genesee County, Michigan, we do see that the Department of Health is reporting two newly confirmed MPOX cases this week so yep it continues there and then we go over to cambodia where they're also seeing another mpox case in fact this is the 12th case they have confirmed so that's not a good thing to see taiwan then now we're switching over to measles taiwan reports first local measles case since september of 2022 so we know measles is still spreading there then we have to go to Boward County, Florida. There's a measles case detected there as well. Fifth case of measles detected at Manatee Bay Elementary in Weston, Florida. So that's not good to see it spreading in Florida. And it's also now spreading in Ireland. In fact, this is more impressive than what we just saw over in Taiwan. First measles case in seven years confirmed in Northern Ireland. So it's popping up in a lot of different places at this time. Now let's take a flight. Let's go on a flight, or let's take a car ride. A little safer maybe than flying right now with transmission of COVID. Let's uh, make our way up to Iowa. Well, a report, nearly 25% of Iowans with COVID had long haul symptoms. We're starting to see states pop up with uh, percentages of how many people have been dealing with long COVID post-COVID. We saw Colorado the other day. Now we're seeing Iowa. I suspect as time goes on, we'll start to see this pop up from more states as the real numbers start to come up. All right, I have to show you this now. This is not a good thing. This is coming from Mark, Mike Horder. He does fantastic COVID modeling. His model shows some bad news, at least for the time being. It says the U.S. is in a prolonged high transmission COVID surge. 68 million infections in the U.S. in 2024 so far. 68 million infections. It's only February 20th. We're not even complete with two months yet. Here's the bad news. We are still at 1.2 million daily infections. We thought the little bump upward would have peaked last week. It actually went up slightly higher again this week. Yep. Right now, one, one in 38 people are actively infectious today. 60,000 plus cases a day are resulting in some sort of long COVID. Now, I'm not going to read everything he said, but I do want to show you the charts here. Take a look at the charts. You can see this past week, that little bump that we were dealing with, that was, you know, forecast by him. He forecasted it very well on his models. And it was showing up in some uh, states. Yeah, it went up just a little bit higher again this week. Now it's expected to gradually go down and then steadily go down as we head into the middle of March. But again, right now, still 1.2 million daily infections a day. So that is something we really need to be concerned about. All right, take a look at this. You saw this yesterday. It's worth repeating. COVID still killed 1,807 people last week as did flu. Flu killed another 1,000. You get the idea here. 2,807 people, 2,807 people died last week of COVID and flu, not including 
other viruses. Let's take a look at today's air quality levels across the country. And you can see across the country today for air quality, you can see eh, it's not great. And why is air quality important to you? Well, if you have trouble with asthma or COPD, it can impact your health. If you're currently dealing with COVID, it can make things worse. If you have long COVID, shortness of breath, it can make things worse. Across much of the East, aside from New England, you can see there's a lot of moderate air quality today, even some oranges showing up as well. Some moderate air qualities in California and the pack Northwest as well. So yes, that is relatively concerning and I suspect this is going to continue over the next couple of days. If you want to learn more about the weather and maybe sometimes how it can impact your health, I have another channel where I do that. It is called Climate Data Report. There'll be a link to that down below. Today we talked about severe storms that are possible for next week. There is a signal showing up for that now. All right, moving on now. I'm going to do things a little out of order today. Taking a look at Philadelphia for Monday. There were 704 EMS incidents, and that's relatively low, but there's something else I want you to take note of. It's kind of an off-topic thing. There were six working fires yesterday. It was a really bad day for fires. Uh, yeah, and some of them were pretty bad. But let's see if we can get Montgomery County. I've been getting error messages for that, and oh boy, we got Montgomery County. Yeah, wow, this is not good. Take a look at this. So there's sometimes, like I say, it's not the number of calls, it's the type of calls. Just 11 calls right now. You've been following me for a long time. You know that's not a lot, and it can go into the 20s. Here's what's not good. Uh, Montgomery Township, Montgomery County, cardiac arrest. Pottstown, Montgomery County, that's two cardiac arrests. Abington, Montgomery County, that's three cardiac arrests at once. Uh, take a look at this, cardiac emergencies in another township, another cardiac emergencies. There's a lot of cardiac issues right now. Three cardiac arrests at once? That doesn't happen every day. That's uh, super concerning. Let's check Chester County, Pennsylvania. I hope we don't see cardiac arrest listed there either. No, but wow, Chester County, Pennsylvania is really busy right now. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five sick calls right now, plus a respiratory call and another respiratory call, a stroke. Yikes, this is just not good whatsoever to see this many uh, calls with people sick right now and cardiac arrest in the other... Just what are we doing? We know some of this can definitely be post-COVID related. Seeing all these sick calls, okay, you have a worn down immune system and you're constantly getting sick and you need to seek medical treatment or emergency medical treatment. Here you go. I mean, the writing is on the wall. I showed it to you in these updates every day where there's all these post COVID issues. I mean, I've been following these cats for a long time. I used to tweet out traffic on Twitter, on an old Twitter account years ago, and I would use the cats to, to, to look where the accidents are. You can see here, traffic incidents, and they would have EMS incidents listed on here. It never used to be this busy back 10 years ago when I was doing that. I'm sorry, this time of day, there would maybe be about five or six calls right now. What is this? we got about uh, 10 to 15 calls here in Chester County, Pennsylvania right now. Totally, totally ridiculous. All right, take a look now. I want to take a look at some wastewater data today that we did not look at over the weekend. I have in my notes here for today, we have to take a look at Chicago. So let's take a look here. In Chicago for wastewater, let's zoom this in. Oh, it's going to act up on me. All right, zooming in, let's see what's going on in Chicago area. First off, we want to take a look here at one that's actually updating, and in Cook County, here we go. Ooh, this is not good to see. So we have a fairly big wastewater site here. 1,134,897 people at this wastewater site. You can see here, it's starting to rise again. This is Chicago, my friends. This is a big city. So parts of Chicago are starting to rise again. Lake, you're starting to rise again. That's not good to see. Let's go uh, further to the north. Let's click on this one, McHenry. Yeah, McHenry, smaller wastewater site, much smaller to be exact. And uh, look at that. It's rising once again. Let's just continue on here. Here's another cook. Smaller site. It's not as big as the one that's over a million. 217,000 population, though that's still a big sample size, and we're seeing wastewater rise there. Not a good thing. You know what? Let's continue in Illinois. Let's give a little more attention to Illinois. Let's see here. Yeah. 
dropping in rural Illinois. How about we come down here close to St. Louis? St. Louis has leveled off, and it's about to start dropping. Now, I don't have this in my notes, but I do want to come out here and take a look at Arizona. I don't know if these sites have actually updated, but I do want to... Let's see here. Ah, uh, yeah, this might have updated. Maricopa County, Arizona, yep. Now, this is a small wastewater site, but it was going straight upward. Wow. And now it's starting to go upward again. It's good to see that there's wastewater sites back here, because these sites were gone for the longest time. Ooh, this is a big wastewater site. 2.4 million population in Maricopa County, and... Wow, it's starting to go straight up again. Meanwhile, Walgreens is good, but uh, this is not good right here. And I will show you Arizona on Walgreens in just a second. Wow, that is going straight upward. Here's another Maricopa County. This one is going downward. So, uh, yeah, not always good to see. Let's get a couple wastewater scan sites in. We do have time for that today. And I think we should do somewhere we haven't done in a while. Let's um, let's just randomly go. How about we go to, to Nebraska? Let's see what is going on here in Lincoln, Nebraska at this time. I'm curious. And we can see here, COVID, it's high. It's You know what? COVID's starting to rise here again. We saw that forecast from Mike Warger earlier. And I am in agreement with him. But I think it's going to really come down to your individual state, county, and city. You're going to have localized areas that just go off and do their own thing. And here's another one of them here. Arizona, Maricopa County, that was one of them. Chicago is one of them. I mean, there's going to be places that go off and do their own thing and don't follow the national trend. And that's why, so it's a good reason, good enough reason to follow my updates daily, but it's a good enough reason for you to stay on top of this. Make sure you have a link saved with uh, information for your local area. I have on my website, datareport.info. I do have a uh, thread where I do have links to you know, a lot of the things we use here in the pandemic update, I'm going to be adding some more stuff to that that I use on here. It needs an updating. And you really need to pay attention to what's going on in your community, not the national trend. The national trend may do one thing, but your community, such as if you live in Lincoln, Nebraska, could be starting to rise again. And that's what really matters when it comes down to you keeping yourself safe. Because ultimately, if you test positive, well, obviously, it's not because the national trend was dropping. It's because, hey, levels are still high in your area. And, again, when a uh, trend is dropping nationally, that doesn't mean that cases have just like that dropped to zero. No, it still means there's transmission out there. They're just dropping from the higher levels we saw earlier or the higher level that rose again here in February, which I must remind you, never happened during any point of this pandemic. Alrighty, continuing on here. Lincoln, Nebraska, RSV is high, rising slightly. Influenza A is high and rising slightly. Influenza B, take a look at this. Whoa, that's more than a slight rise. That's a big rise. So, influenza is rising. Everything's rising here. What's going on in Lincoln, Nebraska? Do you all have a big party and meet up and all have a get sick party or something? Now, this is concerning. Norovirus is just exploding. It's rapidly going up. Hopefully, no, no MPOX and no hepatitis A at this time. And let's do one more site before we take a look at some data from Walgreens. And what do we say we go up here to Northeast Ohio? How about Youngstown, Ohio? What's going on there? Youngstown, Ohio, high COVID but dropping. High RSV, but starting to drop again. Influenza A, high. Influenza B is high and rapidly rising. And doesn't look like there's much issues with the other viruses. Although, look at this. Norovirus is high, but it is starting to drop. That's good to see. All right, some Walgreens data now. Taking a look at Walgreens nationally, 24.1% positivity rate this week. That's down by 2% from 26.2% last week. Total test is down big time. 15,930 versus 24,815. Arizona. As promised, 18.6% this week. The prior week is 27.5%. There was a down 8.9% total test. 312 versus 447. Let's take a look at Illinois since we looked at their wastewater. Illinois on Walgreens is dropping at this time. 28.2%. The prior week is 30.2%. There was a down 2%. And total test, 975 versus 1,388. It's probably royal. Uh, portions of Illinois that's causing the drop. As you know, you saw Chicago. Chicago wastewater, it's going up again, at least on the CDC page. So, 
It's not agreeing with what's going on with Walgreens. Let's take a look at Pennsylvania, then we'll move on. Pennsylvania positivity trend, 17.5% this week, 19.3% last week. There was a down 1.9% total testing, 183 versus 243. And you know what? Let's add one more. Let's come out here to Idaho. Idaho, down 16.7%. It's only an 8.3% positivity rate, 24 tests versus 32. All right, moving on now to some CDC data in the hospital, 21,373. That was, again, was up a little bit. You can see epidemic status. Yeah, it's still increasing in some areas. It's also dropping in some areas for both COVID and flu as well. Not going to spend much time on that. Take a look here. You can see flu. There are still some areas that are very high. Still a ton of areas that are in the high category at this time. JN.1 is the dominating COVID variant at 96.4%. New Jersey, 70 out of 70 hospitals reported today. That is a good thing. 633 hospitalizations, 30 people on a ventilator, in the ICU 70, and we should see a bunch of discharges. Eh, 56, but again, hospitalizations. They're really, let's look at this chart here. Hospitalizations. You can see, they're really starting to drop. And that's some good news. You want more good news? I got really good news for you. Look at this. New York State. Just 894 positives, and that does include reinfections. That's the lowest number we've reported on, I think, this year. I think this is the lowest total I have reported to you this year. Look at hospitalizations. They continue to drop at this time. 1,472 people in the hospital, 166 people in the ICU. All right, the big takeaway from today's pandemic update. While some areas are dropping across the United States, pay close attention to what's going on in your community. You can do that multiple ways. You can go to your state's dashboard, if you still have one. You can go to these wastewater sites, or you could just stay right here with my daily pandemic updates, where I promise to help keep you informed and keep you safe of all these different viruses. We talked about multiple cases of other viruses, today, such as measles, mpox. It's out there. I think they're going to continue to spread. I think we're going to see a surge in measles as we head into spring and summer. Is it going to be a big monstrosity like hope? Why now? But it's going to be something that we need to be concerned about, and we need to stay vigilant and stay safe and help keep ourselves protected all right if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this subscribe to my channel down below and by all means share this on social media anywhere Substacks. there's a lot of Substacks starting to pop up now share it there and get the word out that hey there's still someone that's reporting on this every day and i'm trying to keep everyone safe and by doing so uh, the more people we get informed, the more people we can keep in safe, the better off we will be. If you want to support the channel, there's ways to do that down below. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday evening. Thanks for watching.